Hello all, Dan from DroneBlog.com here. Today's video will be a beginner's walkthrough of setting up the Mini 4 Pro for its first flight, from unboxing to understanding the DJI Fly app. Now feel free to use the chapters to skip to the areas of the walkthrough that pertain to you. Now this year has been quite a year for new DJI drones. DJI has been releasing drones faster than they can be tested and reviewed it seemed. Perhaps you have or will be receiving a brand new Mini 4 Pro in the near future. Now the Mini 4 Pro comes in four different combos. There's the Mini 4 Pro with the DJI RCN2, including a standard battery. There's the Mini 4 Pro with the DJI RC2, this being a 5.5 inch integrated screen. This also has one standard battery. There's the Mini 4 Pro Fly More combo that has the DJI RC2 and three standard batteries. And then the Mini 4 Pro Fly More combo plus, which has a DJI RC2 and three plus size batteries. First, we'll talk about charging the batteries. Now, although new drone day is exciting and we want to get out and fly immediately, the first thing that will need to be done is to charge all of the batteries that come in the various packages and combos, including the remote controller batteries. Although the remote controller might have approximately half power when initially open, it is important to fully charge the remote controller. Now, as is the case with previous DJI Mini drones, including the Mini 3 Pro, the Mini 4 Pro does not include a power adapter. So for the quickest charging speeds, it's recommended that you purchase a 30 watt charger. With a 30 watt charger, you'll be able to charge a controller through the battery hub, as well as the drone's batteries. Now you can either purchase DJI's branded charger, or you can buy any third party charger that you might be comfortable with. If you decide to go with a single 30 watt charger, instead of one with multiple ports, when you plug the three battery charging hub up to the 30 watt charger, then use a second USB-C cable to connect the remote controller, the Mini 4 Pro batteries will always charge first. Now only after the batteries have been fully charged will the remote controller begin to charge. Now here's a tip. If you don't have batteries in the hub, then the RC will charge normally. To get around this, it is advisable to either have a second charger specifically for the RC or a multi-port charger so that when the batteries are being charged, then you can also charge the RC at the same time. Now to charge a standard RCN2 controller, plug the included USB-C cable into the bottom of the RC. The LED indicator lights will begin to blink, signifying the remote control is charging. Now to charge the DJI RC2 with the 5.5 integrated screen, the USB-C charging port is located in the port to the right of the micro SD card slot. There you can plug the USB-C cable in and the controller will begin charging. Now let's move on to the Mini 4 Pro's batteries. The Mini 4 Pro uses the same standard and plus battery options as the Mini 3 and Mini 3 Pro. The Mini 4 Pro gets approximately 34 minutes of flight time with the standard battery option and 45 minutes with the plus battery. Now the difference in flight times between the Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 4 Pro may have something to do with the extra processing and power needed for the omnidirectional obstacle avoidance system that's now present in the new Mini 4 Pro. Now with the Mini 4 Pro, as with the previous Mini 3 Pro, there are two ways in which to charge the batteries. Now for the first method, this is for those who purchase the Mini 4 Pro with only one drone battery. The Mini 4 Pro battery can be charged while it's actually installed in the Mini 4 Pro. To do so, locate the USB-C charging port in the rear of the drone. Insert the provided USB-C cable into the Mini 4 Pro, and then put that into a 30 watt charger. The battery in the Mini 4 Pro will begin charging. Now, the second method is for those who might have purchased one of the Fly More combos, you'll be able to charge all three batteries in succession. 
Now to do this, insert the batteries into the Flymore Combo's charging hub and connect the included USB-C cable to a 30 watt charger. Again, this isn't included. The batteries will then charge individually, one after another. Now, if you have a Flymore combo and also purchased an additional battery, then you can charge three batteries in the charging hub and then use a separate USB-C and 30 watt charger to charge the additional battery in the Mini 4 Pro itself. I use the charger that I have specifically for the DJI RC to charge my fourth battery. We'll now move on to SD cards. Now while the Mini 4 Pro does have two gig of internal storage, whether you've decided to get the standard Mini 4 Pro kit with the RCN2 controller or the DJI RC2, you'll want to purchase an SD card if you'd like to record lots of videos and photos. Now if you purchase the DJI RC2 kit, there is also an SD card slot in the remote controller. This is used for screen recording and also for capturing screenshots. If you don't do screen recording, however, you can store an SD card in the DJI RC2 primarily as just a backup in case the Mini 4 Pro's SD card is left in a computer at home or somewhere else. Now to insert an SD card into the Mini 4 Pro, with the back of the Mini 4 Pro facing you, insert the SD card into the SD card slot, which is to the right of the USB-C port, with the gold pins facing upwards. Now, using a thumb or a fingernail will aid in getting the card in. Just beware that the SD card slot is spring-loaded. If your nail slips, it could cause the SD card to fly out of the slot. Now to insert an SD card into the DJI RC2, with the bottom of the RC2 facing you, insert the SD card into the SD card slot, which is to the left of the USB-C charging port, with the gold pins facing downwards. Again, like with the Mini 4 Pro, the DJI RC2 SD card slot is also spring-loaded. Now we're going to move on to the flight software, DJI Fly. Aside from ensuring that all the batteries are charged, to fly your Mini 4 Pro you will need to use DJI Flight Software. Now, Flight Software is an app used by either a smartphone or electronic device and it's then connected to your remote controller, which then enables the Mini 4 Pro and remote controller to communicate, which is essential for flight control. Now, the software that works for the Mini 4 Pro is again the DJI Fly app. If you have a DJI RC2 combo, well, the Fly app is preloaded on the remote controller. Now, if you're using a separate electronic device with the RCN2 controller, you'll need to download the DJI Fly software separately. Where can you download the DJI Fly app? Well, if you're using an iPhone or an iPad, iOS users can simply search for the DJI Fly app in the Apple App Store. Now, the DJI Fly app for Android, unfortunately, is only available online since it no longer is available in the Google Play Store. So, to download the DJI Fly app for Android, while you're in your phone or your Android tablet, do a Google search for DJI Download Center. In the results, you'll see DJI Fly. Go ahead and choose that, and you'll be brought to the software downloads page. Now we'll go into setting up your DJI account. Now that you have the DJI Fly app installed, you'll want to set up your account. You could either do this from within the app on your cell phone or even using the DJI RC2. We're going to focus on the RC2 first. First, turn on the RC2 by pressing once on the power button, then immediately press and hold the power button. After the splash screen appears, you should be brought to the main home screen.
Now, the first step would be enabling and connecting to a Wi-Fi network on the DJI RC. If this is your first time doing so, access the RC system settings by double swiping down the notifications shade. Once in the settings screen, press and hold the Wi-Fi icon. This will bring you into the Wi-Fi settings. Here you can connect to your preferred network. Now if you previously connected to a Wi-Fi network, on the settings screen simply tap the Wi-Fi icon and you should connect. Now the next step, after returning to the Fly App home screen, we want to select Profile. Now if you've already logged into a DJI account and would like to create a new one, here you'd go to Settings, then Log Out on the left side of the screen. Accept the confirmation and you'll be taken back to the Profile login screen. Now if you're not already logged into a DJI account and would like to create a brand new one, you would go to Login and enter your email. The prompt asks for a phone number or an email address. We suggest submitting an email address. Check the I have read and agree box. If the email address you supplied has not been previously used, you will then be prompted to input a password that is between 8 and 20 characters, as well as input a CAPTCHA. If you'd like to subscribe to product news, Keep the check mark in the box. If not, uncheck it, then select register. You'll then be presented with the generic DJI username. If you'd like to change the generic name to one of your choosing, then just simply press the name and then change the username on the next screen and click done. And that's it. As can be seen, setting up a DJI account via the DJI Fly app is very quick and painless. Now, if you'd like to set up a DJI account via the internet prior to purchasing or logging into your new DJI RC, simply go to www.dji.com from your favorite browser and then choose register. We're now going to go into the DJI Fly app and get familiar with quite a few of the options that'll be necessary for flying with, especially for the first time. First, we're going to talk about connecting to the Fly app. If you're using an RCN2 controller and you're still in the Fly app, exit the app. Now, connect your smartphone to your RCN2 controller using the cables. Now, open the DJI Fly app and then turn on the RCN2 controller. And to do so, you want to press the power button once, then long press and hold the power button until the RC makes a power on signal. The lights will also flash. Now after this, we want to unfold the arms and legs of the Mini 4 Pro and remove the gimbal cover. Now we'll turn on the Mini 4 Pro by pressing the power button once, then press and hold the power button and the Mini 4 Pro will turn on. Now, if you're using a DJI RC2 controller and you just created your DJI profile with the controller and it's already on, then all you have to do really is just turn on the Mini 4 Pro. So first, unfold the arms and the legs of the Mini 4 Pro again and remove the gimbal cover. Next, press the power button once then press and hold the power button and the Mini 4 Pro will turn on. Now we're going to go into the uh, main screen of the Fly app or the Flight View. Now in this screen, this houses all the important flight information that you're going to need for a flight. Along the top, you'll see the aircraft battery percentage, as well as the flight time remaining. You have the RC signal strength, the obstacle avoidance mode, whether it's set to off, bypass, or hover, and the number of locked satellites. Now, it's always best to fly after at least seven to 12 satellites have been locked in. 
you'll most likely get up to 20 or so. Now, if you press the battery percentage icon while you're actually in flight, you're given more detailed information regarding how many minutes until you return to home, how many minutes until the drone force lands, how many minutes until the drone batteries are completely depleted. Now, at the bottom of the app, on the left-hand side, you'll see the following. How fast you're flying, how far out the drone is from your current position, how high the drone currently is in AGL or above ground level, and also a map showing the drone's positioning. By tapping the map icon here on the bottom left where it has a small up arrow, you'll go into three different map views. You have the radar view, you have a small map view, and then you have the large map view, which covers the entire screen. Now that you're familiar with the main screen, we'll talk about the various in-app options that affect flight safety. So to get into the many fly app options, go ahead and press the three button menu at the top right of the screen. Now in the options, you'll see the following tabs, safety, control, camera, transmission, and about. Now, for our intent and purposes, we'll go through the tabs that are specific to getting up in the air safely and taking a few pictures and videos. Now, under the safety tab, we have obstacle avoidance. Now, this is one of the more important options that need to be set correctly and has an impact on those new to flying drones. As was mentioned, the Mini 4 Pro now has omnidirectional obstacle avoidance, meaning it can sense obstacles that are to the front, back, top, bottom, and also on the sides. There are three obstacles for setting obstacle avoidance behavior. There's bypass, break, and off. Now, off basically means that the top, bottom, front, rear, and side sensors are inactivated, which, unfortunately, will allow you to fly your drone into any obstacle that might be in the Mini 4 Pro's flight path. Now you might ask, why would anyone want to turn these obstacle avoidance sensors off? Well, the answer is to get close to objects and fly in tight areas that would otherwise not be possible with the sensors on, because the Mini 4 Pro would stop upon sensing the obstacles in the immediate flight path. The next option is bypass. And this enables the Mini 4 Pro, when flying in a straight line, to go around an object that's currently in its way. The Mini 4 Pro will pick the best path to do so. The last option then is brake. And when enabled, the Mini 4 Pro will stop and continue to hover when an obstacle presents itself. You'll then be able to determine the best course of action to take to get around the object. Now we're going to look a little bit at the radar map. When on, this option will give you real-time on-screen view of how far objects are in front of, on the side of, and behind the Mini 4 Pro. Now this is a great option to have on if you're flying with the obstacle avoidance system off like I normally do. You'll be presented with audible and visual alerts when close to objects without actually having to slow down. Now there's an option here for flight protection. Flight protection, like obstacle avoidance, has very important options and should be immediately set. Now in the flight protection tab, you could set the maximum height the Mini 4 Pro can fly, its maximum flight distance, advanced RTH or return to home options, and the auto return to home altitude. Now, Max altitude. This is important if you're flying in the United States because as specified by the FAA, the maximum altitude a drone can fly is 400 feet above ground level. So you'll want to set that here. However, though, there are some exceptions to this, such as when flying around high structures like buildings and towers. 
To stay in compliance, it's best to set the max height at either 400 feet or just shy of it so you don't have to worry about breaking the law while in flight. Now the next option is uh, max distance. Also here in the United States, the FAA has mandated that drones have to stay within visual line of sight, or VLOS. This is subjective to how far a person can see without the aid of binoculars. Here, we suggest setting the max distance to no limit and just taking care to keep an eye on where the Mini 4 Pro is at all times. Now, as you look through the options more closely, you'll see mention of RTH. This, of course, is Return to Home. Return to Home is a function built into most DJI drones that, when activated, either manually by the operator or automatically if DRC disconnects, the Mini 4 Pro will stop what it's doing and then automatically make its way back to you. So now keeping then this in mind, we have Advanced RTH, or Return to Home. Now this is a newer option in the DJI Fly app. There are two options, Optimal and Preset. Optimal allows the Mini 4 Pro during good lighting conditions, using the obstacle avoidance sensors, to ascend and descend to the best height to return to home, given the immediate surroundings. Preset will set the Mini 4 Pro's return to home to a predetermined altitude of your choosing to avoid colliding with obstacles when in low light situations. Now there's Auto Return to Home Altitude. This is also very important. If the return to home height is not set at least higher than the highest object where you're flying, the Mini 4 Pro is in danger of crashing into said object if the obstacle avoidance sensors are off. Some choose to have their RTH height set to 400 feet and then just forget about it. But we suggest setting your return to home to 30 or so feet above the height of the highest obstacle where you're flying. Setting your return to home in this manner can prove to actually be safer for manned aircraft that might be flying in your immediate area, such as helicopters or seaplanes or any other low-flying aircraft. Now we're going to look a little at the Compass and IMU. Now when flying for the first time with a new drone, it's important to calibrate your compass in your IMU. The compass is used for the drone's positioning, just like a standard handheld compass. If the drone compass isn't calibrated or calibrated correctly, it could result in the drone flying erratically or even the loss of the drone. Oftentimes, when flying in the same general area, the Mini 4 Pro compass would just need to be calibrated once. Now, if you fly in vastly different geographical areas or far from home, but in the same state, calibrating the compass is oftentimes recommended. Now, to calibrate the compass or IMU on the Mini 4 Pro, while in the safety tab, go to compass or IMU, and then just tap calibrate, and the Fly app will walk you through how to do so. In addition, you may be prompted by the Fly app to calibrate either the Compass or the IMU if it's deemed necessary, like when using the Mini 4 Pro for the first time. In these cases, you'd follow the simple on-screen prompts. Now we're going to look at the advanced safety settings. An essential safety setting that should be done regularly based on your situation and where you're flying is setting the Mini 4 Pro's behavior for when the signal is lost. Now there may come times when due to environmental issues, there is signal loss between the Mini 4 Pro and the remote controller. This might happen in congested areas or maybe just randomly, unfortunately. Now there are three actions that the Mini 4 can take upon signal loss. There's RTH, or Return to Home, which we talked a little bit about earlier. There's Descend, and then there's Hover. Now, RTH. When the signal loss is detected, the Mini 4 Pro will ascend to the predefined RTH height, which, of course, we previously mentioned earlier, and then return to the drone operator. Descend. With this option, the Mini 4 Pro will, basically, 
descend to the point of landing. Now this could be a viable option when flying your Mini 4 Pro in windy conditions while you're over land. See, many drone owners, not even just many uh, drone owners, have stated that this option has saved quite a few of their drones, where the RTH would have caused the drone to get lost in excessive winds at higher altitudes. The last option is hover. This will allow the Mini 4 Pro to hover in place when the signal's lost. Now this is ideal for flying indoors or in areas with a lot of tall buildings or skyscrapers where the RTH would inevitably cause a crash or the loss of a drone. Now we're going to look a little bit closer at the remote controllers. We're going to highlight the various functions of the RCN2 and also the DJI RC2 remote controllers. Now looking at the RCN2 controller, as mentioned earlier, to power on the controller, press the power button once, then long press until the RC makes an audible signal. This of course denotes that the remote is powered on. Now looking at the face of the DJI RCN2, we see that there is a power button. Then there's four LED indicator status lights and a power on LED. Now, if you see four green LEDs, that means that your battery is at 75 to 100% battery life. Three green LEDs is 50 to 75% battery life. Two green LEDs is 25 to 50%, and one green LED is between zero and 25% battery life. Now you notice that there's a switch in the center. This says Cine, normal, in sport mode. Now if you slide the switch to Cine, this is a mode where you have slow smooth flight with dampened controls and this is tailored for getting cinematic shots. Now normal is the straight out of the box standard remote controller speed. Sport allows the Mini 4 Pro to fly at speeds up to 35.7 miles per hour. This mode, though, turns off all obstacle avoidance, but it will get you to your destination a lot quicker. We also have the flight pause and return to home button. Now, when pressed and held, the Mini 4 Pro will automatically return to the location marked as home in the DJI Fly app. Of course, the RTH or return to home options can be adjusted. Pressing this button once, will make the aircraft break and hover in place. We see that there's an FN button or a function button and this can be customized. Now, there are a lot of options for using this button. If you press it once, you can recenter the gimbal, use the button for auxiliary LEDs, toggle the map and live view, gimbal follow, FPV mode, camera settings, auto exposure lock and unlock, increase or decrease the exposure value. You can uh, activate the portrait and landscape mode, plan waypoint flights, or use cruise control. You can also set the double press of the function button to do the exact same options. Now, there's also a photo and video toggle. Pressing this once, we'll switch between photo and video mode. And then of course we have the two removable control sticks. Now the back of the DJI RCN2 has a heat vent and two ergonomic hand grips. Moving to the top of the DJI RCN2, we see that there's a slide out integrated antenna and smartphone holder mount. There's a camera video trigger button. If you press it once, it'll take photos or start or stop recording. There are plastic or one plastic scroll wheel, which adjusts the pitch of the camera gimbal. There's also two indented pads to lock in the smartphone. And there is an Android or iOS control cable. These are both included. Now moving to the bottom of the remote controller, there is a USB-C charging port as well as 
control stick holders for the left and right control sticks. Now we'll move on to the DJI RC2 controller. Now, the RC2, like the original DJI RC released with the Mini 3 Pro, is a welcome addition to the DJI line of smart controllers. Although substantially cheaper than the DJI RC Pro and almost the same price as the original DJI RC, the RC2 likewise has a bright screen at 700 nits and a 5.5 inch integrated screen. Now similar to the RCN2, to power on the controller, just press the power button once, then long press and hold until the RC makes an audible signal. You'll see, soon see the DJI splash screen. Now looking at the face of the RC2, we see that there is a flight, pause, and return to home button. Of course, this when pressed and held, the Mini 4 Pro will automatically return to the location marked as home in the Fly app, and the return to home options can be adjusted. Pressing this pause button once will make the aircraft break and hover in place. There's the Cine, Normal, and Sport mode switch. Cine is a slow, smooth flight with damping controls, and this, of course, is tailored for getting cinematic shots. Normal, this is, of course, the standard control speed right out of the box, and Sport Mode, again, allows the Mini 4 Pro to fly at speeds up to 35.7 miles per hour. When in this mode, unfortunately, all obstacle avoidance systems are turned off. There's the power button, which of course you press once, then long press and hold to turn on. And we also have the four LED indicator and status lights. Four green LEDs mean that there are 75 to 100% battery life. Three green LEDs is 50 to 75% battery life. Two green LEDs is 25 to 50% battery life. And one green LED equals zero to 25 percent battery life. There's also two removable control sticks on the face of the remote controller. Now moving on to the back of the RC2, we see that there are two buttons. There's a C1 and C2 button. These are customizable one and customizable two. And they can be customized as follows. The C1 button can be used to recenter or tilt the gimbal down, follow or FPV mode, auxiliary lights, cruise control, auto exposure lock on and off, increase the EV or the exposure value, decrease the exposure value, go to camera settings, or plan the waypoint flight. Likewise, the C2 button can also be programmed to do the exact same functions. Also, there are two slots to store the removable control sticks, two recess mounting holes, and also a vent. Now moving to the top of the RC2, we have two plastic scroll wheels or dials, and this is slightly different than what was on the original DJI RC where those were aluminum. Now the left dial can be used for the gimbal up and down function. The right wheeler dial can be customized to zoom in and out, adjust focal length, adjust exposure value, adjust shutter speed, and adjust the ISO. There's a video record button, a photo shutter button, two internal or integrated antennas, and two rabbit ear adjustable antennas. Additionally, there are modifiers or button and dial combinations that perform certain functions as well. And these also can be changed within the DJI Fly app. You have the C1 button in the right dial, and that can be set for zooming in and out, adjusting focal length, adjusting the exposure values, adjusting the shutter speed, and also the ISO. Likewise, the C2 button and right dial can also be customized to do the same functions. 
Now we'll move on to the bottom of the DJI RC2. Here we have an SD card slot and this can accept SD cards up to 256 gig. You also have a USB-C charging port and then mounting holes for lanyard clasps and other things of the sort. Well, that's all for this video. If you have specific questions pertaining to this or our other videos, we'd love for you to join us at DronePilots.com. For more tutorials and reviews, head to DroneBlog.com.